the day the shortlist came out another friend who had taken the cat with me she calls me and tells me have you checked what you got i said i'm pretty sure i'm not getting it i don't want to check and anyways i checked and i had five calls and bangalore happened thankfully bangalore happened and ahmedabad didn't happen and you know i'm very happy that that happened also. why 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 is why that <laughs> discrimination the big difference about doing uh, mna and investment banking versus doing markets is in mna and investment banking you work on stuff that becomes front page headlines tomorrow and to me that just rang a bell that nothing else wrong right so the and, glamour essentially and uh, you that doesn't happen in markets right it's not necessary that you need to work so much to earn money also right so um, why investment banking so listen it is not for the money at all right money at the end of the day is a number in the bank account how much you can't spend most of what you earn right? every so every rich right? person so says so that by so the so way so guys so 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 please so ensure so that so you so have so enough money first <laughs> after that you can make claims like these Welcome guys to Conversations Cafe. We are in Dubai. Conversations Cafe is, is a show that brings ordinary Indians to you who have done extraordinary work. They are people just like you and me. They just strive for more. They worked harder, and most importantly, they made the right career choices. The one question that we ask everybody at All Twenty by Inside I Am is this: Do you invest in yourself enough? Our next guest, if you go to his LinkedIn profile, all you see is you know this person being on the board of you know countless number of companies. So we have Gautam Gurnani with us today, guys. Please a big round of applause for Gautam. Thank you. Thank you. So Gautam's uh, resume is you know full of uh, star-studded stuff, right? He is not just a chartered accountant; he is also a CFA. Then I think he has a Uh, <laughs> a laundry list of companies. He has a Citibank on his resume. He has a Standard Chartered on his resume. Then he obviously spent majority of his professional life working at Goldman Sachs. Uh, rose up to the executive director position. He's also been an angel investor and uh, been involved with a lot of startups. So Gautam, let's uh, start with your journey. First of all, thank you for doing this and for being here. You are a Sindhi guy based out of Bombay. essentially from the santa cruz bandra area that's where a lot of uh, the brethren lives so how were your formative years growing up and were you focused always academically what do you want to do in life firstly i don't know if i'll be able to live up to all the uh, great uh, introduction that ankit has provided but i hope i am able to but uh, um no listen thank you ankit for those very kind words as a child as a teen as a young adult uh you know my goal always in school or in college was always to kind of be involved in everything right means i was uh someone who used to have a for more for about everything in life basically so in school uh uh if you uh, there was a uh, event that was happening why am i not part of that if there is you know a race that is happening why am i not participating in that if i um, if there's a debate happening i need to get into that so for me it was always trying to get involved in as much as i could i enjoyed numbers i enjoyed winning uh, and all of that led to effectively paving my career heading towards finance because uh you know numbers winning competition all of that comes very easily with uh, finance as a career yeah i think one thing that we've learned in the last couple of hours is that fomo is very important yeah to do well in life it seems you know so listen i'll not call it fomo right it means uh people use it fomo but you know i read something very interesting recently and i'd like to share it with the team here right so it the term that's used is grit actually so i follow sport and i play sport very regularly so i'll give a quick uh nuance from there right so everyone follows tennis you've all heard of federer you've all heard of nadal you've all heard of djokovic right you know there's a stat that i picked up very recently and you know so these guys between them have you know 65 grand slams or 64 grand slams between them and the next person is probably at 3 or 4 grand slams right 
And if you go and look at the number of points won, of the total points they compete, Federer, Djokovic, Nadal, and the next guy. So I would have thought, you know, Federer, Djokovic, Nadal won 80% of the points they play. But the truth is they won only 51 to 55% of the points they play. The guy who's won no Grand Slam probably wins 48% of the points he plays. The thing that you have to kind of realize that the margins are so thin that if you're not pushing yourself that extra, you're not got that grit to keep going that little extra, make that extra effort, whether it's with your studies, with the work, with your sport, with your health. The delta that that extra effort can deliver to you is 64 Grand Slams versus no Grand Slam. I understand that you figured out finance and numbers to be your calling. But uh, why investment banking? You could have joined markets specifically in a trading role as well. You could have potentially become a CFO of a company. Why did you so heavily focus on investment banking, which is, I understand cutthroat, competitive, which is something that you enjoy, uh, but also has long hours. It's not necessary that you need to work so much to earn money also, right? So um, why investment banking? So, listen, it was not for the money at all, right? Money at the end of the day is a number in the bank account. How much, you can't spend most of what you earn. Right? Every so every rich person says, says that, by the way, guys. Please ensure that you have enough money first. <laughs> After that, you can make claims like these. Yeah, anyway, sorry, Gautam, go on. I, like I said, I enjoyed accounting. I started doing accounts, studying accounts in ninth standard and, you know, enjoyed finance, enjoyed accounts. Uh, had, you know, the proud claim that I'll always make my trial balance tally, I'll always make my balance sheet tally, never had that issue ever in any of my exams. So I always knew that it had to be in that direction, right? So uh, then, you know, I went to IM, till then, trust me, I would, didn't be able to tell you between markets and investment and, you know, m and and everything else. But I knew that when I read the newspaper, I enjoyed the Economic Times, I read a deal, I used to feel nice about it. When I read about uh, you know, a joint venture being announced, a big partnership being announced. I used to feel, oh, this is stuff, you know, that um, that kind of I enjoy reading about. And then, you know, I had great mentors on campus. One of them is sitting here. But, uh, uh, you know, one of these mentors was there and he said, listen, you know, the big difference about doing uh, m and and investment banking versus doing markets is in m and and investment banking, you work on stuff that becomes front page headlines tomorrow. And to me, that just rung a bell that nothing else rung, right? So The I'm, glamour, essentially. Not the glamour, it's just about the fact that, hey, listen, you know, you are today doing things that make headlines tomorrow. And uh, you that doesn't happen in markets, right? So, uh, so the R's and everything else, like, you know, again, to me, one thing that uh, helps people do well is getting organized, right? So if you kind of are well organized in your life, you kind of prioritize and compartmentalize things well you can make time for most things that matter to you, right? Uh, I work 13, 14 hour days today also, uh, 15 years into my career. I've had, um, you know, initial days in Goldman where I used to work 20 hour days also. But uh, I still think most of my friends will tell that, you know, I've always been there when they needed me. I've played sports when I needed to. Uh, hopefully my family says the same thing as well. So I think if you organize yourself well, uh, technology and, you know, uh, compartmentalizing things well, you can make time for most things, right? Uh, that uh, is over. That is overhyped. That you know you need to manage things. You can manage it very easily. I think. So how did you prepare for CAT as well? Along, I mean, clearly you had with one more exam, right? So, um, and how was that experience? Yeah, CAT. Uh, in complete honesty, is a lottery, right? So the first year that I took the attempt at CAT and I actually prepared for CAT. I only scored an SPGN shortlist and uh, I didn't choose to go down that route. So I said, okay, I'll continue doing my normal things. Uh, the next year, uh, it was, it's funny because, you know, a friend of mine was a very close friend and I still give him full credit and he claims to take 20% of all the wealth I've made now <laughs> because of that. But uh, he says that uh, he called me when he was going, he was at the SBI branch buying a cat form for himself. And he said, he called me and he said, Gautam, should I buy a form for you? And I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to do it anymore. He said, I'm here. Tell me you want to buy it. I said, okay, fuck it. Just buy it, right? So so he bought the form. I filled the form, submitted it. Um, and then I was working in Standard Chartered Bank at that time. I had finished my CA and was doing well, had a good role. My my path at that time was very clear. I'll do CFA and then, you know, work for a few years, do an MBA in the US and then take that path because the first attempt at CAT had not played out. So when I said, I'm doing this only to keep my to make sure that I do Vasuli of that cat fees that I paid, right? And lo and behold, I came back, I checked my uh, score on, you know, these things, uh, IMS at that time, and 
आई लाइक ठीक है यार इसमें नहीं होगा किसी का तो खत्म एंड आई मूव डॉन एंड आई ओपन माई सी एफ ए बुक्स ऑन संडे एंड स्टार्ट स्टार्टिंग फॉर दैट राइट अगेन द डे द शॉर्ट लिस्ट केम आउट एन अदर फ्रेंड हुआ टेक इन द कैट विथ मी शी कॉल्स मी एंड टर्स मी हैव यू चेक वट यू गॉड आई सेट आई एम प्री शो आई एम नॉट गेरिंग इट आई डोट टू चेक एंड एनी वेज आई चेक एंड आई हैड फाइव कॉल्स एंड बैंगलोर हैपन थैंकफुली बैंगलोर हैपन एंड अहमदाबाद डेंट हैपन एंड यू नो आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट दैट हैपन discrimination yeah so you know i think there are personality that and you know i hope my, if my ima friends see this they're going to get really upset about this because i have really really good friends from ima uh but uh i just think the city of bangalore resonated more with me than ahmedabad did i have gone to ahmedabad like i said i like play uh, going in all the competitions and also i've gone to ahmedabad for competitions a few times i actually won the business plan competition in ahmedabad two years in a row which again they are probably upset about that but uh, but bangalore as a city the campus resonated a lot more i think uh, nothing against ahmedabad had i been there had i got ahmedabad i would have surely taken ahmedabad don't get me wrong but uh, i think like things uh, uh, happen for the best sometimes they say and i'm glad bangalore happened and not ahmedabad obviously then you enter i am bangalore did you uh, feel challenged at i am b uh, given that everything seems to have been quite easy for you so far i tell you what the one thing that as a commerce grad uh, and a ca person when you get into the yeah, iims because you're surrounded by iitns everywhere right and you know obviously you suddenly realize you were a big fish in a very small pond and now you've gone and you've become a very small fish in a very big pond uh, but the one thing that the iitns knew which i as a commerce grad didn't know is how the scoring system works man i didn't it took me like the first two terms to figure out how does this relative grading even works right because it didn't make sense to me and i don't know why it works like it but like i'll give you an example right so accounts obviously i was a ca i go into uh, i am and uh, the first co- one of the courses is accounts so my thing is clearly i'm going to ace this and i aced it right so i dropped in the uh, in the f- uh, first term i dropped probably one point one mark in all the accounts exams right so i thought okay here's my percentage when you do percentage calculations in commerce you say okay isme you will get like 100% aa gaya to overall you'll kind of be you know you'll still be about the 85 90 and you'll be in the top 25 of the class easily but in the relative grading system if you've scored so well you get 4 out of 4 the next guy who's like 50 points behind you got 3.95 i was like how does this make any sense right to figure that shit out it took me like almost a term and i thought i'll focus on 3 4 courses and ace that and then the two i'm not uh, i'll do okay but that didn't work at all and i used to see these iitians go and they used to fight for one mark two marks with the professor ke boss yaar i need one mark more one two marks i was like why does one two mark make a difference on a percentage things right and then i saw that there were courses that the one two mark moved your relative grading from 3.25 to 3.75 and that's when the game changed and i was like i opened right what what is this happening right and it works out okay right the the first term is the most challenging because like for me i had to even figure out how the grading works apart from studying and at the same time you were preparing for job interviews and you know the kind of hoo ha that's made around job interviews on iams is like next level and you know that pressure and all gets to you but uh, again uh, I'm grateful that it planned out. It panned out the way it did, and no complaints about how it ended up. Right. So yeah. Obviously, Goldman is like <clears throat> one of the most coveted brands, even today on most campuses. How did that happen? And um, also, I think while you were on uh, campus, you know, India was probably at that time in one of its first big bull runs from 2003 to 2008 ish. Is when when you actually graduated and things kind of fell apart after that, uh, especially for people in finance. Uh, but how did Goldman happen to you? Uh, did you intern at Goldman? I did intern at Goldman. Uh, so. But how did uh, you know that? Okay, this is the firm I want to work with, or is it just that they chose you rather than you being in a position to choose them? You have to kind of make sure you tell what you like, and obviously Goldman was my top preference. The moment I decided I wanted to do investment banking in terms of M&A, you know, obviously Goldman was the number one brand and bank in that, and you know, the target was to go for Goldman. While I went to interview for Goldman first, though I had all the shortlist from different banks. Uh, Goldman took its own sweet time to run the process, and in the meantime, I was in a Lehman interview. Thankfully, that didn't happen again. But uh, I was in a Lehman Bank interview, and the guys there were willing to give you anything you wanted, right? And uh, literally, I uh, they said, "Okay, we'll give you a Singapore job offer." I said, "No, I don't want to go to Singapore. I want to go to London." I said, uh, "Okay, we'll do this for you. We'll give you one month there, one month there, one month India." I was like, "Dude, what are you guys doing, right?" So uh, again, the seniors and the mentors helped over there, where they knew very clearly that this guy wants to go only only Goldman and. 
they made sure they were checking in all the time for me in that interview process that the moment Goldman gives the green light for Gotham, they'll pull me out from wherever I am and make sure that I accept that offer. So thank you to, again, those mentors of mine who did that for me. Uh, listen, for me, it was like I said, uh, once I decided it had to be investment banking, Goldman was very clear. Uh, even though, you know, on campus, Goldman was not the best payer. Uh, they made sure they actually made you work as compared to Deutsche Bank and others who used to take you on a trip and party. But uh, uh, but uh, but no, it was uh, it was a very grueling internship. I think uh, two months of internship, I didn't sleep before 3 a.m. any day, worked every weekend and yeah, thankfully managed to get the offer to join them full time. So, yeah, I'm assuming that um, you would have gotten your pre-placement offer early on in your second year. Yeah. So then did you study at all in the second year or? Uh, so I was, like I said, very competitive, wanting to kind of make sure that I'm... I saw this as an opportunity. Everyone else is not studying, I'll study harder, right? Uh, I improved my ranking in the overall batch from being top 50 to top 25 by the end of the year too, by only, you know, making sure I was studying even harder in second year. And uh, the only time I really gave, didn't study was in the last term. Had I done that, I would have been in the top 10 also maybe, but that's fine, whatever. It is. Anybody watching this, guys, there are all kinds of people in the world of finance. I can assure you that... Uh, he's not the only kind uh, because uh, nobody will apply for any of our investment banking courses listening to Gotham. So guys, <laughs> there is a different world out there. Okay. Did you feel at any point of time that, okay, now I've kind of arrived or this is it? I still don't feel that. Sure. But I'm sure something makes you happy, Gotham. Yeah, so uh, listen, when, again, the good thing about the journey through Goldman and even now uh, when I do transactions and deals is the, the thing, the reason why I joined this career is the thing I enjoy the most when my transaction is on the front page of a newspaper. So that shows that I chose pa correctly right. because what was the driving factor still remains the most motivating factor. So I don't post much on social media and everything else, but whenever I do a deal, I'll always make sure I kind of post about that. Because that is what made me choose this path and uh, therefore remains the most motivating factor still today. No matter what the employer tells you when you're joining a company, the actual experience will be very different to the experience that was sold to you, right? So it's almost never the same. When you land in that job, you either kind of accept it for what it is or you fight it, right? I think the, the learning that I would kind of share in that is that we don't uh, like accepting it or uh, fighting it whatever you do do it like with the full energy you want to go with it right but if you go half-heartedly in either approach you're not going to make make it work out for yourself i think like either you accept it and then fully accept it with full peace that this is what you're going to do and you're going to live with that right or if you want to fight it fight it with full peace and be prepared for the consequences of that also